there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing some DIYing with me? Come on in. Let's get started. What have I got going on for you for today? Today's DIY is one that you can use in fall and it's one that you can use at Christmas time. It is one of those DIYs that is reversible and it is so stinking cute. I can't wait to show you what I'm bringing to you today that you can use for both of these seasons. It's one I think you're absolutely gonna love. So I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let's do some fall and harvest slash Christmas DIYing on a budget because that's what we do here. Let's get started. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. For this first DIY, I will be using one of these cube drawers that you can get from Dollar Tree, taking some blue painter's tape. There is this cutout in the insert of the drawer that I don't need. So just by taking a piece of blue painter's tape, placing it on the inside of this drawer, it is then going to allow me the capability of easily filling in this hole using one of my favorite fillers, some spackling. Typically Dollar Tree does have a spackling, but I have not been able to find it lately. So if you head on over to Walmart, you can get some of this cool spackling that actually goes on pink. And once it's dry, it's white. And I feel like this one dries a bit quicker than the one at Dollar Tree. So it's kind of a win-win. Once it's good and dry, you are good to go. Take some sandpaper and smooth it out. Then I'm gonna go in with some white acrylic paint. The acrylic paint I'm using today, well, it's a folk art acrylic paint that you can get at Michael's. It's a bit better than Apple Barrel. It's a bit thicker, so you don't need as many coats. Guess why I'm using this? Because I'm out of Waverly's white chalk paint, grrr. But this is gonna get the job done. And let's not forget the outer part of the drawer. It's gonna get a good coating of paint as well. You're also gonna to wanna to pick up one of these craft boxes, not to be mistaken for a gift box, although it can be used for that. This is found in the craft section. We don't need the lid. We're gonna do away with that. We just need the box itself. And guess what? This too, it needs a coating of some white paint. This here is what you should be left with. Three boxes, three different sizes, all painted white. What are we gonna do with these? Well, the biggest box, which was the craft box, on one side of it, I'm gonna give it a good coating with some Mod Podge because what am I gonna put on the side of this box? Well, for those of you who are new to my channel, I'm a little bit obsessed with burlap and twine. And so to this, I am going to place a piece of burlap once I get that burlap good and on there, I am gonna go in with a second coat of Mod Podge over the burlap to really adhere it onto the box. This is gonna help not only adhere it, but it's going to stiffen the burlap so when I cut the excess burlap off, it doesn't fray. For this smaller box, which was the insert, again, yep, I'm gonna go in with some of that Mod Podge because would you look at that gingham fabric right there? It screams fall and harvest. So that's what I'm gonna add to the side of this box. Where am I going with this project? Well, spoiler alert, I am doing a snowman on one side of these boxes and a scarecrow on the other. And so this is going to be built out of these three boxes. So on this side, I am going with the scarecrow and I'm making overalls. And so the gingham part of the fabric would be the shirt of the scarecrow and this burlap that I am adding would be the overalls. Once your fabric and burlap is good and dry, you're good to go to cut off the excess. Now I find that it is easiest to do it using a fresh straight razor blade versus using scissors. If you try to use scissors, you're not going to get a good clean close enough cut to the box. And so by using a razor, you can use the box as a guide and you're going to get a nice clean cut. I originally had the intent of leaving the burlap 
with its natural color, but once I started getting this together, I realized that I didn't like it, it was too light. So I'm gonna go in with some chocolate sprinkles, apple barrel paint. This is a beautiful, rich, dark brown that probably is my new favorite color, and I'm gonna paint that burlap with this brown just to darken it up a bit. I want to add some buttons to my Scarecrow's overalls there at the bottom of the straps. These are a wood button that I had in my stash that I want to say I got from Michaels. I like using wood buttons because it cuts down on what you have in your stash and you can paint them any color, so it's a win-win. To the bottom part of the box, once the burlap was dry, I did go in with some orange burlap ribbon and just cut some random size squares to kind of give that feeling of patches on the overalls. You can't have patches without stitching, so by cutting some small pieces of twine and putting it on the edge there, look there, we've got patches sewn on. Now to the opposite side of the overalls, this is the, the medium box, yeah, this is the medium box. Because the opposite side is a snowman and I've got my black buttons out, I'm gonna put a black button on this box here. Now I know I am all over the place with this DIY, but it's because it's double-sided to the larger craft box on the opposite side of the brown burlap. Again, I'm gonna add a black button to the center there too. Now it's time to do the faces. For the scarecrow, I cut a triangle out of some scrap chipboard that is gonna be the nose. Now for the face, I don't wanna overthink it, but I don't want to do it with paint for the first time and risk messing up. I'm a little bit nervous about that, so I like to go in with my pencil and just kinda sketch it out. By using a pencil, I can easily erase it or I can paint over it with the white paint if I really mess up bad enough. I'm not gonna overthink this. I'm just gonna keep it simple with the mouth and use some dots for the eyes. My face is drawn in. I'm going in with a Sharpie to add the features in black. I feel like using a pen and a Sharpie is easier than using a paintbrush and paint to get those nice clean lines. I also like to go in with some puffy paint because puffy paint adds texture and it's easy to work with. To these boxes, I didn't show you, but I did take some of Tim Holtz Distress Ink and just kind of ran it along all the edges of the box just to, I guess, give it some dimension and outline it so it just wasn't a white box. Now taking a stiffer paintbrush and some chalk. This is a chalk that I've had in my stash for probably 15 plus years. Dollar Tree has chalk by Crayola that will work just as well and give you the same effect. Just by putting that brush in the chalk, look at that, you can make some soft, rosy cheeks, really bringing your snowman and our scarecrow to life. Adding some highlights with white to the nose and the eyes really, again, bring more personality to whatever face it is that you're creating. So it's real easy, just don't overthink it. And yeah, they don't need to be perfect. My favorite part of every DIY, putting it together. I'm gonna stack these boxes from largest to smallest and I'm just using hot glue. For the hat, because Frosty and the Scarecrow need a hat, I'm gonna use these wood planks. Because I have a means of cutting the wood, I'm using wood. I'm going with the sizes of a four by four inch square and this is going to be the base, the brim of the hat and the top part of the hat is going to be a three by three inch square. Now, if you don't have wood, use one of Dollar Tree's plaques because you can cut it easily by scoring it with a razor. Since I've got my pieces cut, I'm gonna paint one side with the chocolate sprinkles because this is frosty and a scarecrow. It's gotta be two different colors. On the back side, I'm gonna use some of Waverly's black ink. I wanna add some of the fabric that is on my Scarecrow shirt into the hat just to kinda of tie it all in together because every hat has to have some kind of decorative strip, right? So just using some Mod Podge, I'm gonna place just a bit where I wanna put that, I guess, strip of fabric. And again, I just freehand cut all of this stuff. There is no need to be perfect because a scarecrow is kind of shabby anyway and falling apart. So it's gonna add to the personality of your piece. Flipping it on over to the back side, which is the black side, Frosty's hat. 
I'm gonna add a red and black buffalo check strip as well. This is a double-sided DIY, so we've gotta do both sides. As I was putting this hat together, I realized that I did the brim of the hat on the top all brown, which is not going to work. So on the frosty side, we're gonna have to fix that. I'm just gonna go in with some of that black paint and paint the other half of this hat black. Easy fix. My scarecrow is missing hair. I don't have hay, so I'm just gonna use what I have in my stash and Raffia is gonna get the job done. My word, I wasn't joking when I said I'm all over the place with this DIY. I hope you all can keep up. I'm kind of flipping from side to side, but I realized Frosty needed a scarf. And so I'm using this wired ribbon that I just cut a couple strips of that's gonna match the strip on his hat. Ah, yes, I'm happy. I think I'm safe to say that Frosty is done. Going back to the scarecrow, Frosty had a scarf. My scarecrow needs a handkerchief around his neck, so I'm taking just some of that orange burlap ribbon, cut it in a triangle, and look at there. So cute. But I was realizing that my raffia was a bit too light. It was all I had in my stash. If you have a darker one, use a darker one, but there's an easy fix to that just by taking some Distress Ink and going over that raffia. It's gonna give it that dirty look, and it's gonna help the raffia scarecrow hair stand out just a bit more. These bottle caps are probably one of my favorite things that Taller Tree started carrying by Crafter Square. For today's DIY, guess what? You're gonna need three of them. Do you know where I'm going with this DIY? To all three of them, I'm gonna give them a good nice coating with some white acrylic paint. Using some of this caulking by Toolbench, this is something you can find at Dollar Tree, guess where? In the tool section. I'm gonna use this to give the effect of snow. Not only is it gonna give the effect of snow, but it's adding texture to it, which is everything in a DIY. Adding texture and personality to a DIY kind of elevates whatever DIY project it is that you're doing. And so just by using a dabbing motion, you're gonna get a really cool effect of snow. And I'm gonna do this to all three of my bottle caps. It took me a total, I wanna say, of two uh, containers of caulking to do this. These are super cute, but I think that they can look better. So by taking some Mod Podge and giving the top of these a nice good coating of that, then I can take some of Dollar Tree's faux snow and add that to the top, just kind of elevating it even more, adding, I guess, a bit more personality because that faux snow has such a fun texture and color to it. So it's just gonna add to this soon to be snowman, bottle cap snowman. Oh my goodness, so much fun, dun dun dun, just kidding. Okay, so to one of the bottle caps, we do need to add some features of Frosty's face. And to do that, I'm gonna use my puffy paint because it's easy to use, especially on something as textured as this. Again, I can't emphasize to you enough how you just don't need to overthink adding facial features to a snowman. It really is super easy when you think of it in the sense of adding parentheses. Everybody knows how to draw those, right? And doing just simple, I guess, shapes is how I break it down so I don't overthink it and I don't feel intimidated when drawing these pieces in. And so you can see just how easily I'm adding some features to this snowman and it's really gonna bring this snowman to life. Another easy way to add rosy cheeks onto something other than using paint is to use an oil pastel. This is an oil pastel by Crayola. Dollar Tree has a pack of oil pastels. By taking a softer brush and just running it onto that oil pastel, you're gonna get some of it onto the bristles of your brush, which is then going to give you the capability of easily adding that soft rosy cheek look to something so you don't have those harsh lines. My Frosty needs a hat, so I dug into my stash of stiffened burlap. It is super easy to stiffen burlap just by using Mod Podge or white glue and letting it dry. That way you can make something like a burlap top hat. 
but I need my top hat to be black and I love the texture of burlap. So I'm gonna take just some black acrylic paint and give my burlap or my frosty hat a good coating of that paint. And well, you see how I'm gluing it on. This hole in this one piece is just gonna go right over the top of the bottle cap. Then the other piece I'm just gonna glue right onto the front there, just like so. See how you can't see it because I'm really in frame. Good golly, how many times this last month have I said that to you all? It's so funny. The last time I said it, somebody said, Kelly, put an X on your table so you know where your DIY needs to be. And I tell you, if the X didn't bother me, I would totally do it. But look, you see what I did. At least I finally showed you, right? There is a bit of a gap there, but it's not gonna show because I am gonna go in with some of that red and back, black, red and black, spit it out, Kelly, buffalo check ribbon, put it over the top of that hat there and it's gonna cover up that space or that gap. Yeah, that. It's that time. Let's put our snowman together. I'm gonna overlap the two bottle caps just like you see me doing here and I am going to pound the back of it where the two bottle caps meet with a ton of hot glue. Now, I have been asked by several people what hot glue I use. I prefer to use the Gorilla Glue sticks. They are by Gorilla Glue and I have seen really great results with them. I am not a fan of the Crafter Square glue sticks. I'm not gonna lie, they don't hold together real well. And so yeah, using some good glue sticks, hot glue, it's gonna get the job done. So once I've got that bottom done, I'm gonna go ahead and overlap the, I guess the last bottle cap with Frosty's head on it, finishing up our snowman, I think. See, look at how much hot glue I put on that. Oh wait, we are so not done yet because Frosty needs some stick arms. So since it is fall, I've got leaves falling from my tree, so I just went out into my front yard, picked up some sticks, maybe cut a couple off of the tree where the leaves were missing and thought that this would be so fun to add for the arms and maybe just add a piece or two, I guess, for the hands. And we can't forget the scarf, right? Because I want my bottle cap snowman to stand up, I'm gonna take one of these blocks by Crafter Square, hit it with a bunch of hot glue, and just place it on the back of my bottom bottle cap. Now, to make your snowman stand up nicely, I do suggest putting the block on while you're holding it up so you can kind of position the block where it needs to be. And guess what? We are done. Let's go take a look at our bottle cap snowman. Oh yeah, look, I added buttons. And here we have it. Such a fun DIY. Can you tell I love snowmen? I totally do. Do you like snowman as much as I do? Let me know in the comments below. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Nikki, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY Dollar Tree Jenga Plock ornaments. Nikki, I am loving your spin and your twist and your recreations. Thank you so much for sharing them with us today. How cute is this? This is one of those pieces that you can pull out in September and you can leave it out through January. I love pieces like that. Cuts down on the switching out of decor pieces. I'm somebody who likes interchangeable pieces, pieces that already have a spot that I don't really have to take decor down and replace it. I do do that, but for the most part, I like to use those interchangeable pieces because I find that they're easier to decorate with. I hope you all enjoyed today's DIY, this scarecrow slash snowman. If you're looking for some early Christmas inspiration because you wanna get an early start on some of those DIYs, make sure to click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now.